Good morning. I have a little poem, a poem that uh, by a gentleman, Edwin Markham. And I think most many of you will have heard this one. I never knew who said it. He drew a circle that shut me out. Heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. One of the points of view that I hold and that I invite you to, if you you can think it over, if, if it's not for you, that's fine, but, uh, and I th but to me, I feel it's a point of view that is necessary for um, as we go toward peace in our world. And this is how the point of view goes. There is no us and them. There's only us. And um, so if there are those who are oppressors, if there are those who, you know, who have seem to have the power in the world and are not doing well with it, and if there are those who are the downtrodden and the twisted and the those in prison, just, you know, everybody from every spectrum, um, if it's all us, and that doesn't mean that you're responsible for other people's actions, uh, you can't be, you can only be responsible for your own, and they're responsible for theirs, but at the same time, we all have great influence upon one another, and that influence is very real. You can't force somebody to do something, but but with the influences that there are in this world, we're responsible for the influences that we cultivate so that the tendencies and the uh, are hopefully very, are peaceful ten tendencies. And um, so when we're meeting people to or thinking about people or making plans that relate to, to how we're going to interact with people, realize um, that it, it's all us. And I don't necessarily mean that in some esoteric way either. Um, that's a different subject, you know, that we're all one. Um, that's a different subject. That's not what I'm talking about either. We could. But... Um, I always imagine, and I, I have to admit, I haven't been challenged very often in huge situations. I mean, nobody's tortured me, you know, I haven't <clears throat> been in situations like those. So my situations are more on the level of just with my friends, with my neighbors, with strangers. You know, I've been a receptionist at a law desk before, which is a very interesting place to be in terms of human interaction, uh, because everyone that comes into a law office is not at their best. They're in stress, you know. Um, I've had opportunity to be with people who ha have done crimes, um, not just in that situation, but even... Anyway, I've, I've met a lot of different people, but they're, they were m much simpler interactions, not like huge extreme ones. But it's almost in these simpler ones that I have the opportunity to think about what kind of reply I'm going to extend to them when um, they have become angry at me. And I have had many opportunities. I know that one time I was in uh, I was in Cub Scouting and I was the leader and uh, some of the other leaders became angry with me for things that I had done and I didn't know at first what I had done. And I was very, I was scared by the way they were treating me and I was very hurt by the way they were treating me and I was confused by the way they were treating me like well, I don't understand what I've done to cause you to be angry and I could have gotten angry back and I could have run and hide both things I wanted to do but um, I made some very deliberate decisions about my response to them 
and you know like I would like to learn can you I tried to be as humble as I could and can you I, I would love to learn what it is that you would like to teach me about this situation so that I can improve my leadership or whatever you know so that so that did happen so it's just little things like that and I'm not saying I was perfect in the situation um, when when someone comes at me with a desire to hurt me either, or, or on accident it's a hurt, but even if they did it on purpose, or even if they come at me with a, some kind of thing that they want to say to me, the first thing I remember is, I don't need to reply, first of all, because most people are just within themselves. They're not seeing beyond themselves. They can't. That's like a higher level ability to see beyond yourself. And I'm not saying I'm there yet, because I'm very much in my own <laughs> self. But they're not seeing beyond themselves. And so if you're trying to like convince them a different way or try to correct their information or try to argue with the information that they've presented, th this is not a recipe for any type of um, beautiful interaction. But if they come at you with whatever they want to say, I try to find the piece of it that is their highest self that is their best self or maybe their most wounded self that needs comfort and acknowledgement and I try to offer that and I, I don't see it as an opportunity for me to reply about with my story or my ideas and like I said I'm not perfect at that kind of thing but I do try and because I like to talk too but I try to get, make it be an opportunity for me to just be in their presence as a human being and, um, you know, I can see how you might have come to that conclusion. I can see how you, um, I can see that you're very passionate about what you believe. I mean, um, there's ways to affirm the best in people. And also, you know, it's, it's not that you can't get angry at people. Uh, I know when I was working English as a second language and a lot of young people were assigned to be taking education as part of their probations and so we had basically young criminals in our classes and I there was a very personable and beautifully happy young man but I did find out that his crime is that he had stabbed his teacher multiple times and I thought about that for a long time like I wondered if I should start hating him because I liked him I loved him actually he was just a really really beautiful person but obviously it hurt someone very, very badly. And for me, I kind of realized that, you know, the teacher that he had stabbed absolutely had every right to hate him. And I don't know, I don't know what the story was about if the teacher hated him or if the teacher forgave him. I, I wasn't ever privy to that part of the story. And there are people that I'm very angry at because they've had direct, or I used to be, um, direct, you know, pain into my life. And I, you know, I, I have the right to those emotions, but I felt like with this young man that, you know, he hadn't stabbed me and he, and it was important that I support him because I could, maybe I was the person that could, and not everybody you know, you don't have to do everything for everybody. But uh, don't be afraid to draw a circle to bring some people in. And, you know, if, if they violate that circle, I, I always say you have, to f you have to start with yourself, what you're strong enough for. Maybe, maybe you can only help yourself and, and you can't extend a lot of benevolence to other people. That's okay, but if you feel like you can go farther, then do go farther. And just see what you can do. Maybe there's times when you need to be angry. Maybe there's times when you need to stand up for and say something in the situation. Um, and acknowledgement doesn't mean agreement. You don't have to agree with what people are saying. Um, and there's times to stand up and say things. But, and sometimes you do have to stand up in a way that looks like a fight. But I think that that is less times than we might think because I think that you can be very creative with inclusion and love and at least give the attempt. Like, try to find out what could I do differently here that would 
bring them into the circle of love. And the circle of love is still going to require people to find their integrity. It doesn't mean you can do whatever you want to hurt whatever and then um, there's still accountability in love. But, um, may, but sometimes you're the person that has to offer accountability to someone and sometimes you're not. So it depends on what your position is and what your opportunity is. So my suggestion is just be a little more creative. And if you don't have the strength for that inclusion, that's okay. But if you do, if you can find the creativity, if you can find a uh, soft reply, if you can find a way to acknowledge people, even, even the young man, I mean, he had his reasons for stabbing the teacher. It's not okay what he did, but he didn't do it out of nothing. There was something inside of him and um, yeah he has to be stopped but he also but there it also doesn't cost us anything to understand him because maybe if we understood him we can help someone else who might be in danger of doing the same thing to come up in a different way and not bend toward the violence but to bend a, toward the healing so anyway those are some thoughts and uh to draw the circle to let people in even if they're drawing you out I, I think it's fun to like if someone's coming at me with anger and rudeness and division I think it's fun to like find the way to surprise them like you can hurt me if you want to I mean I'm not going to let people hurt me but you know if you can you can try to like hurt me and if I'm strong enough I will stop you if I'm not strong enough obviously if you're stronger to hurt me what can I do but you can't, what you can't do is make me hurt you back. I won't do that. I won't hurt you back. And I want to tell people that you're safe. You are safe because even if you choose to come toward me with violence and I'm not safe with you, I need you to know that you are going to be safe with me and that I will not come at you with violence. I will come at you with nonviolence. And it doesn't mean I'm going to lay down and let people walk over me. I, I'll have strength. I will limit people if I can. But in the end, I'm not going to hurt back. I'm going to stop the cycle if I can. And you're safe. You have nothing to worry about in my presence. And that's the position that I hope to be in. It hasn't been tested in all ways. But that I have had some smaller tests. And that's, I think where we all need to go. It's my invitation to you. Not easy, but think about it. See what it can do. Later.